this is a revamp of what I gave at uh, OSCON in London. I apologize if it is a retread. Uh, but this is the top 10 things that you need to know about Pearl 6. As well as to the talks we've seen so far about Pearl 5 and Pearl 5 development. Right. Obviously the first thing you need to know is where to go get it. Obviously starting at uh, Pearl6.org. We have uh, documentation available at uh, docs.pearl.org docs.pearlsys.org, which, by the way, I should emphasize uh, for those people that keep harassing people up, that keep um, asking us, well, when do we have when will we have production software ready? Well, uh, docs.pearl.org modules, uh, those are done with uh, Pearl 6. So you have production code already out there in, in the wild doing Pearl 6, doing, doing things. Uh, Docs is right now the canonical source of documentation. For Pearl 5, you're used to having inline docs and inline pod with um, being able to use Pearl Doc to read documentation. Uh, we haven't quite gone to that point yet with Pearl 6. Everything right now is more or less online. So you'll need to have a net connection to read documentation and go to Docs or Pearl 6 to view content. Uh, there also will be, um, I don't know when, but uh, within the next three or four months, hopefully, look for, I say three or four months, hopefully look for a uh, Pearl 6 pocket reference coming out from LeanPub. I haven't saw it yet on the price. I think it'll end up being, um, for the um, for the ebook version, it'll be either $9.95 or $11.95 uh, euro. So that, is, that will be coming up here hopefully within the next three to four months. And there will also be, um, I, I can't say precisely how I know this, but there will be a Learning Pearl 6 uh, coming out here within the next year in terms of actual hardbound reference material. Um, one thing that uh, Pearl 5 is famous for is the 170,000 plus modules on CPAN. Pearl 6 isn't quite there yet, but we have roughly, I think right now, nearly a thousand modules, which is impressive for a language that has been out in the wild for less than a year. So if you can go out to modules.pearl6.org and view the growing list of modules, including, of course, um, everyone's favorite, uh, Mylador, which is a dancer clone. We're having a dancer two talk coming up, and if you want to get a jump on Pearl System Development, by all means download Biodor from uh, modules of Pearl Network, or you can use one of the um, module stalls we have down here to install that and um, play around with that, much like you do in Pearl Five. Uh, is is designed to be a uh, dancer clone. Well, not designed to be. Um, it is kind of a dancer clone, and um, I am trying to add some things to it to make it more uh, Pearl 5 compatible. I'm right now halfway through writing a template toolkit, um, work alike for Pearl, 5, for Pearl 6. The idea being that you take your entire website and your existing template toolkit 5 code and drop it into Pearl 6 and use the template toolkit module from Pearl 6 to million templates. I right now have uh, the basic get functionality, uh, if functionality, and for each. Those all work. Not yet recursively, I got to fix that bug tonight. But uh, the, those do work, and you take your Pearl, you, you'll have to obviously scrap your system Pearl 5 code, but you can keep all the templates, all of the JavaScript. All of the HTML play, you can keep all that intact, import that into Biodor, and use a template toolkit. In order, just like you do right now in Pro 5 to do your display. The latest source can be found over here at uh, Rakuna.org. Um, I probably should delete this because I've been criticized a few times for giving out some information, but if you want to do more extensive development, than just simply sit around and 
simply do development on one person. If you are doing a module development, you'll want to look at Recruiter Brew, much like uh, Perl Brew for Perl 5. But you probably don't need that. For Perl 6, um, we have CPAN, for Perl 5, we have CPAN and CPAN minus and various. Wake up, please. Please do wake up. Okay. One thing I forgot to do is turn that off. All right. Back where it was. Um, CPAN and CPAN minus on Perl 5 has the equivalent of Panda and a new one called Zeph available for doing module installs. And if you need help or just want to hang out and talk Perl 6, by all means, uh, join us on the IRC Freeno.org Perl 6 chat channel. There's also Perl 6 Dev and Perl 6 Toolchain. You'll find MST hanging out there on occasion as well nowadays. And if you want to actually see actual live Perl 6 source, which I won't go into in too much detail, um, we can start, you can certainly look at uh, Rosetta Code, where we have roughly, I think right now, two to three hundred uh, problems, anything from uh, math to uh, puzzles to backtracking to basic algorithms to um, uh, drawing fractals available in Perl 5 and Perl 6 mm -hmm. to take a look at. The highlights for Perl 6 over Perl 5, at least for me, and these are by no means comprehensive. They're my own personal peccadillas from, from working with Perl 5 for way too many years and getting frustrated by problems and finding ways, finding workarounds instead of actually trying, trying to develop a new language. The first thing, um, the grammar is done in, it can be parsed in a single pass throughout the code, so there's no backtracking. This makes the actual parser much cleaner to write. For those of you that have done anything more complex than parsing in a patch log file, you'll know this is a great improvement. The rail structures alone are enough reason, at least for me, to switch. The error messages uh, with the advent of, say, Go and Swift and Rust is now more important than ever to have clean, readable, and simple error messages. We'll talk about that as we go on. Unicode friendly is now pretty much Unicode friendly to a fault. Um, I believe Unicode version 9 will be supported by the time the Dewaller, the uh, Perl Wolf 6. D for Diwali release is out, um, which means that you probably have support for emoji. So you have emoji constants, emoji variable names, if you so choose. But uh, Perl 6 supports everything, all the way through, all of the uh, Unicode RFCs, all the way through number 27, which is math RFC. I'll show you some examples of that later. The big change for beginners for Perl 5, the essentials actually make sense. For those of us that, that have been working in the trenches in Perl 5 support, and as Matt alluded to earlier, um, on the Freenode IRC channels, and I, did, I predate Freenode by about maybe 10 years. So I've been doing this for a long time. The sigils that you deal with as a Perl hacker, the dollar signs and at signs are confusing at first glance because when you want to use an at, when you want to use a at variable, you have to, when you want to look at a slice, you have to use a dollar sign. Why? With Perl 6, it all goes away. Your variable name is at a. You reference it with at a brace one. Your hash is percent %a, you reference that with percent %a brace key name. So in Perl 6, it's a big change for those of us that came from Perl 5, but for people that just start out with Perl 6, it will hopefully feel natural, or at least as natural as a language that uses sigils instead of popping and coding a variable 
sorry, Hungarian encoding for variable names can be. I have an idea as to how to solve that, uh, but that's a much longer project and I don't have the time right now, <laughs> unfortunately. I may, if someone wants to ask me about that, by all means, um, feel free. Wait one. Math that actually works. This is important in financial industries, and one place where we kind of want to, we kind of have an inroad actually. Um, there's a lot of COBOL code out there uh, that does finance, that is done for finance, and at least according to, um, at least according to Curse Pro, uh, there's a way to wedge Perl 6 into that space. I'm not quite sure how he meant, how he talked about, and I was unfortunately not there for his talk at uh, YAPC last year due to a uh, injury. But apparently there is an inroad into the financial communities where we can use, show off how easy and accurate Perl 6 math is and use that to show, to show them how to properly handle integers, how to properly handle money. A function signatures. This is another really big one. Uh, as of, what was it, uh, Perl 5, 18, 18 versions. It took 18 versions and at least that many years to actually get something resembling a modern 2000s era function signature for Perl 5. And Perl 6 has it beat hands down. Um, Perl, with Perl 6, you have you pass in variables, you do type checking, you can do introspection on types, and one of my extensions to um, Bilodora uses that. So you have to take a routine, introspect on the signature, and create a synthetic, synthetic signature from that. Regular expression bootstrapping. Perl 6 is written as a regular expression parser. So as long as, so for any language that you want, as long as you can write the equivalent of the Perl 6 R engine in that language, you can rewrite Perl 6. You can't say that with Perl 5. Take one look at toke.c and you will see why. Take one look at the YAC file for Perl, for Perl 5 and you will see why. You can't do that at all with Perl 5. Perl 6 is pretty much clean sheet development, and again, as long as you can do the real special grammar for Perl 6, you can rewrite the entire language. And probably reuse most of the, not use most of the uh, lower layer code uh, to do this. That's what we've done for um, our own VM. That's what we've done for um, JVM. That's what we've done for JavaScript. Yes, there is a JavaScript backend to Perl 6. So, we were talking earlier about uh, JavaScript and no frameworks. Perl 6 now runs on JavaScript. And I, I now see the uh, oh well, uh, type blast, don't worry about that, that's a mathematical term. Um, OO is now completely, reflect, completely reflexive. Uh, we go beyond the current uh, model of inheritance to include roles. Uh, you can do reactive programming, you can do um, attribute oriented, you can do frame oriented programming, if you so choose. So you have the flexibility to do what uh, Java does, the flexibility to work how uh, JavaScript prototype does, all within the same language. Okay, uh, custom operators. Uh, for those of you that have played around before with uh, Perl 5 overloading, uh, Perl 6 has a full type system, which is optional. So you can take your current, you can take your um, code, write it as you would in Perl 5, and later on, as you go on through your pro, as you go on through programming, go in and say for your core, you have a core um, parser processor. You can go in and just add a type declaration to one to one function. Cache a few hours, errors maybe, like I do repeatedly with the current uh, Perl 6 uh, parser inside Perl 6. 
add a little bit of code, go on and update that. Add, go on, add a new type, update that, fix the errors that finds, <coughs> until you have everything typed. And Perl 6 also is an optimized compiler, so as you add types, you add hints to the Perl compiler. So your code, hopefully, will get faster and faster as you add more hints and add typing. Because that's another large change. Um, because you can take, at least on the JVM, you can take the uh, process output and save this, save your Perl 5, save your Perl 6 code in a pre-process in a post-process form and run that. So you get effect effectively a JIT speed boost. And that has been improving in leaps and bounds. If you look at um, uh, Tux's graphs for how Perl, how, uh, uh, what is it, uh, text C CSV is running right now, it is maybe, I think the test suite for uh, Perl access Perl 5 access runs in 7 seconds, and the Perl 6 version runs in 15. So we're not quite there yet, but it is very close, and after all, we're trying to beat out C. Concurrency, uh, I don't use this as much as I should in my uh, work, but um, Perl 6 is fully concurrent, fully multi-core. So if you have your processes you have one process doing work. Um, Perl 6 has implicit concurrency in its operators. So if you use a map or a you use a map or a gather or uh, any of the hyper operators, you're automatically using concurrency, even though you don't necessarily know it. So for anything that erases over maps, anything that erases over arrays, anything that erases over keys, you may be using concurrency at that time and not even know it. That's not quite true yet, but it's almost there. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this. And I apologize for the formatting, because I would have one moment. OK, there we go. Much more legible. Yeah, can you see that? Can you see that? All right, cool. All right. Um, first of all, single pass frameworks. This is quite quite the definition, but as you walk through the array, as you walk through the text here, uh, the first character they encounter tells you what tells you what day structure you're dealing with. There is an implicit uh, parity here, and in Perl 6 there are a lot more implicit pairs. In fact, I use, um, in this entire block code, you'll see there are no pairs. I cheat right here to get rid of one more, in fact. But you'll, you'll still see the old-fashioned um, arrow for hashes. You'll still see the old-fashioned braces. It's just that now you no longer need to type the pairs around your lists, here or here. <coughs> Sigils, as, we met, as I mentioned earlier, have changed. You have your at doctor array variable there. And when you want to reference that, you use the same array at Docker. That's an error in Perl 5. Lots of people still do that. Um, but in Perl 6, we turn that, we turn that on its head, and now this is the proper way to do that. You'll see here um, the new, the older um, Perl 5 hash key reference style. The, with the slight difference that there's now no longer a bare word exception for what's inside the braces. In Perl 5, it's not always easy to tell, to tell what context you're in at any, at any given point. In Perl 6, that's changed. Right here at the start brace, you know immediately that you're inside a block of code. And in fact, this is just this whole thing right here. These are hashes, hash purposes, just, sorry, uh, pairs, just like this is over here. And the entire thing is just a list of hash pairs that gets returned to the hash reference. So you can tell immediately you're inside a block by the braces. 
or you're inside a list of arguments by the appearance, or inside a string by the quotes, or inside a bare word by the pointy phrases there. You'll see, I'll explain this briefly here. Um, this is a fancy way to get around having to use pairs. Because ordinarily I would need to place pairs around the sum statement. Sum pairing if I were to write this in normal order. As you all know, to take the mean of a, um, the mean or the average of a list, you need to collect, collect your number of records, or rather collect your amount of records, one plus four plus four plus three, that adding up to uh, 12 divided, take, I think so, yeah, 12, um, then divide that by the number of records, which is over here. Normally you see that the other way around. Normally you take the amount and divide by the number of elements. Well, Perl 6, along, along with the Along with the realization that the equal sign is really kind of a modifier, because you say you have an operation plus, you have an operation minus, and an operation plus equals, an operation minus equals. Well, we came to the realization that uh, the equal sign is a modifier. So we chose to add the R modifier, which reverses the sense. So, if you, so for values for operators such as minus and divide by, where the order is important, you can choose to use the normal order or the reverse of that order by using R. And this works for any operator in Perl and any custom operator that you use or create. Now, error messages. I deliberately, over here, eliminated a semicolon as part of an as part of an error test. So what we get here, um, at least in Perl 5, you would get a very, very narrow, a very horrific one line description of the error. In Perl 6, we improved on, on that. So you get you know, two terms in a row. And terms here being the sum statement, followed by this list over here. So those are your terms. And it asks, are you missing a semicolon or a comma? So you get that right at the top of the list. And obviously, the actual line number. Now I have to write. This text over here continues on to the uh, next continues on to the next slide, but I need to temporarily do one thing. This is how it looks on your screen. Two terms in a row. Again, over here, the uh, semicolon, semicolon missing. Tells you the exact line and the exact point where you need to add the semicolon or comma. And incidentally, um, everything up to here is green, and everything uh, after the eject marker right there is red. This down here, I wouldn't worry too much about. I know what they mean because I've been working entirely too low level with the grammar. I am entirely too familiar with what those things mean. But that is how, that is how you get a Perl 6 error message. It's more on the level of, say, a Rust or Go error message in how detailed it is and how I, I go through all day and go through various error messages in detail how those actually work and how much information they give for diagnosis of uh, your problems. But that can be for another talk. Moving on. 
as, as I mentioned before, uh, Parole 6 is right now at Unicode 8, uh, going to Unicode 9 for Diwali. And part of this is that we go through all of the uh, Unicode technical references. And one of those is the math technical reference, which states that for, say, numbers like one tenth, you need to use the number one, you need to return the number one tenth in code. So we do, we do just that. I don't think that, uh, I think that this, the plus there is still required. I may get rid of that eventually. You'll see over here, um, alpha. Perl 6 now lets you use, lets you use without the fancy UTF-8, um, without any sort of UTF-8 problems or encoding changes. You can use any, uh, any alpha numeric Unicode characters for your variable names. So you can use, uh, so you can use Chinese, you can use a uh, you can use a Sinhalese or Turku or whatever variable name you choose. You'll see also down here, um, most of you are used to seeing the uh, slash for division. Perl 6 supports the Unicode equivalents. That's up in, uh, uh, what is it, uh, 0, 2, 4, something. The, the actual, the uh, more proper division operator there is supported. And also, of course, we get the actual, the correct value. Two plus one tenths is 2.1. Divide that by two, you get 1.05. So for all math works the way that you, that we all, we all know and love. And I'll throw this out as just a brief side note here. Um, and, for the, and for those of you coming out to uh, Yapsi in Amsterdam, um, you might want to take a few days off to do tourism. And one thing they will go by, probably on your tour, is going to be uh, Western Turk. And the West of, and the um, West of Turin. Sorry, I, I, I know enough Dutch to get myself roasted. Um, and on, on there you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, this, you'll see this weird symbol, which for those of you that know anything about uh, Roman numerals, you probably have never seen that before. This is a very, very old equivalent for 1000. So you'll see this thing followed by DCLXVI on the side of the, on the, side of the um, Western Kirk. So if you need to know how old it is, well, just get out of your laptop, find the character map, type in the character, ask Perl, zero R, R for Roman numerals, 1,000 plus that message, and it will return 1,666, which was the day of founding of the Western Kirk Cathedral. Now, of course, division also works as well. Try to do that in actual Roman numerals, and you'll go insane. I know, I tried. And you'll still get the correct value. I, I don't. I haven't yet implemented uh, any S printf modifiers or a Roman conversion function. And by copious free time, I'll get around that at some point. As as we touched on before, the uh, the sigils here. Um, you'll notice again the lack of parents. These sigils here actually correspond. Again, this these would be errors in Perl five. Or rather, Perl five will not. Perl five would do something, but not quite always what you expect. In Perl six, that problem goes away. You have a variable at powers, and you have a variable at powers. You'll always reference it by that name, no matter where it is in your code. You'll always be able to use the variable at powers to reference that. So no longer do you need to worry about, okay, do I need to use a dollar sign for this? Do I need to use a percent sign? Do I need the dollar percent brace or a score workaround? No. You just need to know that the variable name there is what you use later on. App powers, reference app powers by point two. And by the way, I want to demonstrate this, but um, 
You can also reference um, image used. You can also reference um, element three of the array. And Perl will do, and Perl system will do the right thing and extrapolate your one, two, four, eight out into a um, list of powers. So I, I cover, again, my background's math, so I, I apologize for helping on that just a little bit. But um, for those of you that know how things work in Perl 5, uh, what will this turn in Perl 5? No one? OK. Well, everyone knows, clearly, even, this, even the simple first grade would know that it's um, uh, it's uh, five times ten to the minus five times two to the minus forty eight power. That's intuitive. It's obvious. That's the right answer. Everyone knows that. Thank you. I triple flow point math. See, Ruby agrees with us. It knows the answer is five times ten to five times two to the minus forty eight power. Python agrees. Five times two to the minus forty eight. Perl 6, Perl 6 begs differ. Perl 6 actually returns 0. Because in Perl 6, these are proper rationals. In Python, in Ruby, in Perl 5, those numbers are all good old fashioned 64 bit IEEE flight point numbers. Sure, it may make for a little bit faster manipulation, granted. But, you know, we're now on a VM in Perl 6, so we can afford a little bit slow. So what Perl 6 does is it uses a separate math library that turns these into rationals. So instead of 0.1, you have 1 tenth. Instead of 0.2, that becomes 2 tenths or 1 fifth. That becomes 0.3. 0.3 becomes 3 over 10. So in this case, when Perl 6 goes through, it says 1 over 10 plus 2 over 10 is 3 over 10, minus 3 over 10 is 0 over 10 is 0. So Perl 6, contrary to what, you, contrary to what we all know and love, we all know obviously the answer is 5 times 10, 5 times 2 to the minus 48. Perl 6 disagrees and says is 0. And this works, um, uh, this works all the way out to um, uh, the end of out, out to the empty position libraries. And if you really want to have a little proof as to what's going on behind the scenes, uh, you use the unfortunately named uh, nude variable to strip off the to, to strip off the clothing of your fluent point number. And you get back a pair of numerator one to nonlinear ten. So that's how it's stored internally. So this is important for finance. So for mills, um, in financial computing, you usually use um, or or force will eventually use mills. Nowadays, they just use uh, nowadays just use the uh, last two digits of the currency plus a third digit for overflow. That's where you get the mill from. In Perl six, you no longer need to deal with that because Perl six handles that correctly and display and just shifts down the denominator. So no need to worry about decimal points. Okay. Right. In Perl, Perl 5, uh, following up function signatures back in 5, either 16 or 18, I can't remember off the top of my head. But in any case, as far as I'm concerned, they were far, far overdue for that. Because Perl, Perl 5 tends to get looked down on because of the because of how we inherit our syntax largely for that from Bash, where there are no real uh, function signatures. In Perl 6, in Perl 6, I, I have other slides later on, but um, you, we have the ability now to properly use function signatures to declare uh, dar a and dar b as actual variable names. So you no longer need to worry about the old question of, well, did I write that with shift? Did I write that with underscore? 
And I don't know about you, but I have lost count of the number of times that I've gone through and you know, written in Pro 5 a function signature. So full brace and then write, write down my dollar a dollar x equal at underscore and expect that to work. Because I forgot the parents and have to go back and realize, oh that's right, I did that I did that using shift, I have to go back and rewrite that. No longer do you have to do that in Perl 6, you declare your variables in line. And for those of you that have been caught out by this bug uh, in sort, you'll see I'm using here dollar A and dollar B. Those are no longer special special variables. You can use dollar A and dollar B anywhere you want in code. If you never run into a problem with dollar A and dollar B, congratulations. It's a problem uh, that is very specific and will make you scratch your head and look through man pages for about 20, 20 minutes to an hour or so trying to figure out why your program is behaving the way it is. In Perl 6, you can use any variable name that you please. The signatures here are in depth extent. You can still use the same tricks that you used in Perl 5 to do to capture everything into a engineer at R's array. You can use optional arguments, you can have defaults. You can even specify constraints if you want to. And for your int function over here, you can even say, int, I only want to call plus on an int where dollar a is between zero and 10. Otherwise, generate error. Perl just will let you do that. And as bonus here is also proper type checked. So we have one, two arguments here. The int here is optional, as is the entire thing. Although you have to fall back to the old Perl 5 method of declaring adder score and say my parent dollar x comma dollar y equal adder score and write all that up by hand. You could do that if you wanted to, but in Perl 6 now we have proper signatures. And they are also they are checked through the number of arguments, as you can see. We call plus of one comma two. Again, eliminating the break, eliminating the parents here, around there and there. This is one of maybe three places in language that is white space sensitive. That's it. But you take your plus and call with two arguments, you get three. You take your plus and call with three arguments, and Perl does type checking for you. So no longer inside your validation, inside your HTML validator or your moose calls, do you have to have an entire block worth of methods that have no purpose but to go through and validate your data for you. Instead, in Perl 6, you do like other languages do, like Ruby does, like Python lets you do, like Java lets you do, and lets you type check right there at compile time. And of course, if you need to do other things, it's optional. And if you want to, you don't have to do that at the time. You can go through, and as I alluded to earlier, you can simply ignore the int while you're going along coding, while you're in the flow. Just go through sub foo parent, dollar ray, dollar b, dollar at c, etc. And later on, later on, you realize, oh yeah, that function only will ever take an integer. I know, I'll speed up and add an int declaration. You can do that later on. And there's a, there's a hidden page there. Next, um, Perl's forte has always been rail expressions, and Perl 6 is no exception to that. Uh, there is, I believe, a bug in the slide. Um, I won't expect anyone to find. But um, this, for those of you that have worked with um, Perl for a long time, um, you may or may not know about the slash x modifier to clean up your word expressions and add a white space. So you add comments in there. Perl 6 does that by default. So all these word expressions here, my x, brace, all these have white space enabled. So you put white space anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah. 
anywhere, anywhere you want. And it, the syntax should still look pretty close to what you are used to here. You'll see the uh, square brackets have changed a little bit. But again, this is for the better. If you have the old, the old way of doing this in um, Perl 5 would be, say, open square brace, caret, and then double quote. But the thing is that what you put inside the braces is supposed to be a character class. It's not supposed to be the negation of the character class. And that's what the caret does. So what Perl 6 does is moves that outside. So everything inside the square brackets is what you want to match. No exceptions. And we use here the point blocks here to indicate that this is a bare word, a quasi-bare word, if you will. And parents here to indicate that we're occurring a list of captures. And finally, and finally yeah. I'll run through it very quickly. And escape here. And should this whole thing look familiar, um, I don't know if you've seen uh, the JSON models in Perl 5, but uh, this is the entire JSON module done in Perl 6. This is a valid JSON parser in six lines. With one exception over here, you need to allow for double for sequence. But it, but it has lists of it has lists, it has pairs of variables, it has these, it has the entire brace, it has the bracket. That is JSON done in six lines. I, I challenge anyone to do this in six lines of Perl 5 without using, without resorting to the slash e modifier. It's not possible, actually, because of the, the contents of the array, the contents of those here. There, there, there is one slight bug in here. Uh, that, that expression needs to be a little bit more complicated, but it will never get beyond that line. But complete parser in six lines of Perl 6. And I can't, I cannot see how long I'm playing here. Okay, all right, just, just make sure. Okay, <laughs> sorry. What's that? Do you want to continue? Oh, do I have one? It's okay. Yeah. I, I can, I can grant, I will gladly yield safe. Okay. All right. Well, I, I will do this, I'll do this once more because no one has caught the reference. <laughs> yeah. This, this is a very brief and hopefully comprehensive sample of how OO now looks in Perl 6. In Perl 5, you, in Perl 5, you have packages and you have blessed. That's it. In Perl 6, you have classes. You have an enum type. You have roles. So what you're used to in Perl, say, moose. Uh, moose lets you have, use the has keyword. We stole that early. Uh, Moose also lets you create roles. Uh, we factor that out, so instead of having a package and declare a role, we have role as a first class type. So that works as you expect in Pro 5, sorry, Pro 6. Here is a little interesting bit right over there. What, what the statement, what the statement does uh, for those of you that start out early, or for those of you that go back to your the start of programming, when you were looking at, say, a language like C or JavaScript, and you wanted to say, if dollar x, if x equal 1 or 2, the first thing you would write down is, if x equal 1 bar 2 and then go through and compile that code and find out that it's not what you think it is. Because in C, the bar is what, in C, the bar is the OR operator. 
so that becomes one or two. So that becomes one or two, which is three in C. So that becomes if x equals three. And confuse the people, and you go to your instructor, and they say, oh, well, you have to write that as if x equals one or x equals two. Well, for rule six, no longer has a limitation with chain operators. Uh, the dollar sign that starts right here should be treated as um, an element of the adder array. So what this does is for, is for each entry in your attribute array, it has to be a type int, and it has to be a value where the value is between 0 and 18. These are chained operators in Perl 6. And you can write your own custom operators that chain the same way. They will work with all of these. And this feature, um, I think there is a replica one in APL, but I know of no other language off the top of my head that does this. I think this done with that slide. There, there are a lot of other things to uh, look at here, but um, again, you have enum types, you have classes, roles, so you have proper OO, and you also do inheritance with the you know, import roles here with the does keyword, and later on, um, I don't have a class for that, but there's a way, obviously, to create a subclass of another class, but with roles, it's a much more as much simpler and more flexible way to do the same crossword. And I'll, I'll wind up things here with one last slide showing how Unicode does. How, how, uh, how dense you can get Unicode into Perl. You create your own square root operator. You create a minus modifier, a plus modifier. You create your own sigma operator. Just as a pre prefix operator. If it's in with everything else, it operates just like any other operator does in Perl. So you, so you free your own prefix operator, operate on a list of values. Here's zero through infinity, and yes, that does work. It may not finish, but it will act, but it will compile. You change the uh, infinity here to say 10 or some other value, and it will actually work for you. But sigma here is uh, everyone, everyone that knows um, high level math has seen this for summation, so this is the actual term. I would love to be able to work it out to use a composed character to put a number down here or i equals, but unfortunately, Unicode is not quite that extensive. And just, just wind these up here. Uh, these equations here are in use everywhere. They're in use in this very room right now. These are the equations for uh, the Lagrangian form of the Higgs boson. What actually gives the state of mass. So we have, so you can do all that now in Perl 6. And I shall wind it up. Do we have questions? How do you represent infinity in Perl 6? Right there. Yeah, but in oh. Oh, uh, you can also use, you can also, I said that infinity can't be represented. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the character for the infinity, but how do we represent the concept itself of infinity? That, that, that is the same. Well, technically, technically um, I, I know, technically, I can actually debate this for, for quite a while, but infinity is not a number. That's the, that's the mistake everyone makes. Infinity is not a number, it's the number of numbers there are. So that's why, we, so that's why uh, for instance, one plus infinity or infinity plus one. It's still infinity. Yeah. yeah, if you add one infinity, you still get infinity. If you multiply infinity by two, you still get infinity. 
If you square a 50, you still get a 50. Because we're squaring the actual content of the wheels. But you still use if there. But the, the important thing here is that this is a lazy evaluate list. So if I were to rewrite that to say uh, 0, 1, 2, 4, dot, dot, dot. Perl 6 knows enough to extrapolate the sequence. So the next value will be 8. Next value after that is 16. So if I start typing the Fibonacci uh, list, then it will figure it out that it's the Fibonacci list that is computed? Uh, it won't like it, it will not do that recurrence uh, because Fibonacci is not primitive recurring. It's not a primitive recurrence. Uh, but what you can say there is um, 1, comma, 1, comma, star plus star. Where star is the first is the nth element of the series, and the next star is the nth plus one element of the series. So that, that way will work. And it looks like this. And Like so. This side actually works. I'm typing down here, you can't see. Uh, one and one are also Fibonacci zero and Fibonacci one. And then star takes this value and adds it to that value. So you get two. Go to the next element list. That is one, that is two. It takes one plus two, adds that together, gets three. And so on. Two plus three, adds that together, gets five. So that's how you do a non-primitive recursive function. Uh, you can also do any, you can also do Ackerman the same way, if you're familiar with that. Uh, loop of sequences, anything that is non-primitive recursion. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Uh, okay. I think we're pretty much one here. Okay, we're good. All right. Thank you.